know that genetics plays a significant role in the number of candles on our cake. But what if, by making specific lifestyle choices, you could not only increase the number of candles on your cake, but improve your quality of life now and well into your golden years? Just like beginning to make investments in a 401k at an early age, making these specific lifestyle choices can compound into a happier and healthier life. And these choices cost nothing, but they're one of the most important investments you will make. Because the line, the lifespan line, is getting longer. In 1900, 49 was the average life expectancy. Today, it's around 79. And the 90-plus population is the fastest segment-growing population in the US. There are 3 million 90-plus today, and by the year 2050, there will be 10 million. And of those 10 million, one half will have dementia, and a larger percentage will have functional disability and frailty. I hope to reach that 90 plus mile marker as long as I can take care of myself, enjoy my family and friends, and do things I like to do. Please raise your hand if you think it's important to be able to breathe. Did you know that after the age of 30, we lose approximately 10% of our ability to breathe every decade of life? The average person loses about 10% of their muscle strength, endurance, and flexibility every decade of life after the age of 30. We begin to lose brain volume around the age of 25. Think back to class reunions. The average person gains 10 pounds per decade of life after graduating from high school. Unless you make specific lifestyle choices and Regular exercise is the most important one. In fact, the World Health Organization has associated physical inactivity with most chronic disease and illness. We spend $117 billion in healthcare costs because we are inactive. Regular exercise is primary prevention for 35 chronic diseases and illness. Neuroscientists, medical doctors, aging researchers, and positive psychologists have identified these specific lifestyle choices as having the power to change your life, making it healthier and happier. Regular exercise tops the charts. A positive attitude is key. Managing stress effectively is essential. A healthy diet. Simple tip, eat less, chew more. Strong and positive relationships, having a social connectedness, and mental stimulation. Congratulations, you lifelong learners. And having a purpose. We're going to focus on the top three, and I'm going to give you some simple choices that you can implement in your life to live better and longer. Let's begin by taking the two-finger test. Please take your middle finger and pointer finger and place it on your lips. Now, leaving your fingers right where they are, pull your head back as far as you can without tilting back. Take a look at the space between your lips and your fingers. It sends a pretty powerful message. We sit in poor posture. We don't start looking like this because we're 80 or 90. We look like this because we live in a world of forward flexion. We sit here, we drive here, we text here, we keyboard here. So let's move into good posture. Sitting up tall and long, doing a chin tuck, squeezing our shoulder blades together and back and engaging our core. Now that looks nice. It also will give you an ab workout all day long while giving your digestive system the space it needs to do its work, expanding your lung volume, and when you sit, stand, and walk in good posture, it sends a message of confidence to your brain 
and to those around you. What's the number one excuse for not exercising? I don't have time. I don't have time. So I'd like you to join me in the experiment. If you're able, put both feet on the floor. Now I'm going to give you each an imaginary $100 bill. I'd like you to place it between your cheeks. You know which cheeks I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. So squeeze really tight gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus. And we're going to stand up and sit halfway down five times. So join me if you are able. You want to hold on to that $100 bill so the person behind you doesn't get it. Ready? Stand. One. Are you contracting? Holding on to that $100 bill halfway down. Two. Halfway down, squeeze a little tighter, three, we're almost there, four, one more time, reach back, five, and you may be seated. Congratulations, you have just fit fitness into your life with five squats, one of the top five exercises for lower body. We spend the majority of our wake time sitting, and sitting is compared to smoking for its negative health consequences. Plus, when you sit for about 10 to 20 minutes, your brain downshifts because blood pools in your legs and you don't get the oxygen your brain needs to do its work. So your brain thinks my human is ready for sleep. A simple way for you to sit less, move more, is to take the 30 and three challenge. Every 30 minutes, Move for three. Stand up and sit down. Go get a drink of water. Go clean out a drawer. Think of how clean your house and office would be. Dance to your favorite playlist. March in place. Simply move. By taking the 30 in three challenge, you can burn up to 500 extra calories a day. Times seven days, that's 3,500 calories. You can burn an extra pound of fat a week while countering the negative effects of sitting. Do any of you wear an activity tracker? People who wear activity trackers and use them move 30 to 40% more than those who do not. So strap on an activity tracker and make 10,000 steps a day your goal. 20 to 30 minutes of aerobic activity is golden. You'll decrease your risk for stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, and many other diseases while increasing brain-derived neurotrophic factor. BDNF is like a miracle grow for your brain. It grows neurons and dendrites, and it serves as your own personal janitor. It actually cleans up, out waste products that accumulate from lack of sleep, stress, or unhealthy eating so that thoughts can get from place to place more easily. Yoga is my go-to for developing muscle strength, endurance, flexibility, while improving balance, and it also increases a chemical in your brain called GABA, gamma anubutyric acid. GABA actually calms your brain and relaxes your body. The 90 plus is one of the largest longitudinal studies that gave us interesting information about our oldest old and what they have in common. What they found was that, number one, they were physically active for 15 to 45 minutes a day. Two, kind of good news, they were a little overweight. And three, they drank two servings of alcohol a day but you can't save those up for big celebrations or Friday and Saturday night. <laughs> Movement matters. Attitude makes a difference. How many of you got up this morning, took a shower, buck naked, stood in front of a full-length mirror and said, honey, you are looking good, and gave it a little shake? <laughs> what do you say when you talk to yourself? You will have more conversations with yourself than any other person in your lifetime. You think 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day. You are guaranteed one human relationship while you are here on God's green earth, and that is your relationship 
with you. You're not guaranteed a mother, father, sister, brother, significant other, friend, even a child. The only relationship you are guaranteed to have throughout your lifetime is your relationship with you. So say good things when you talk to yourself. Your thought life is key to your overall health and well-being. In fact, 87% of illness can be directly related to thought life. And our thought life feeds the stress that we experience. Three out of four doctor visits are stress-related, and stress is the basic cause of all human disease and illness. We're going to do a simple experiment right here today to look at the difference between embracing different stress mindsets. We're going to look at stress is debilitating versus stress is enhancing. Because our explanatory style makes a big effect on how we see stress, our level of stress, and how our body experiences it. Stress is debilitating. Please put your hands out in front of you. We're going to say the same thing two different ways and be mindful of how they feel. Dropping our head into our hands, we're going to say, I am so stressed. On three, one, two, three. I am so stressed. Think about how that felt. Now, reaching your arms up towards the sun with a smile on your face, I am so stressed. One, two, three. I am so stressed. Did you feel a difference? Stress mindset, our explanatory style, matters. If we embrace a stress is debilitating mindset, our body goes into fight, flight, or freeze response and breaks down our immune system. If we embrace stress as a stress is enhancing mindset, we can boost our brain power and build our bodies. Dr. David Snowden did a study that showed the power of attitude on length and quality of life. The most significant finding in his study was the power of positive emotions. He found that those nuns who journaled throughout their lifetime about positive emotions lived up to 10 years longer and had fewer signs of dementia. Attitude simply matters. So why is it that some people are happy and some people struggle to find happiness? If you think about your biological parents and their parents, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what your shape of your body will be and your weight on the scale will be. Psychologists have found that it's the same for our happiness. We have a predisposition, a genetic set point for happiness. We can boost our happiness by about 10% with external circumstances like getting that new boat or finding that right guy or getting the new baby or retiring. But we go back to that genetic set point. Positive psychologists have also found that you can actually boost your happiness by 40% by the way you think and behave. By embracing positive thoughts and emotions, you can be 40% happier. So simple choices to think about what you are thinking about. Because when you own a thought, you own the physiology of that thought. Negative thoughts break down the immune system. Positive thoughts boost the immune system. Run your thoughts through the TH test is what I'm thinking true. We make up a lot of stuff in our heads. We mind read. We assume, we awfulize, we predict and worry about the future. Is what I'm thinking healthy? If it's a negative thought, it's not healthy for your body. So you can choose to let those thoughts go or let them grow. Stomp out automatic negative thoughts. If someone comes knocking at your door at 2 a.m. in the morning, are you going to welcome them in and feed them so they stay around a while? Have you ever had one of those negative thoughts at 2 in the morning and fed it with some others? You can either let those thoughts go or let them grow. Instead, embrace positive emotions. Emotions of joy, gratefulness, kindness, confidence, interest, and hope. Practice the attitude of gratitude. After only three weeks of journaling things you are grateful for, you can increase your level of happiness, your level of optimism, and your sense of social connectedness. 
Journaling is one of the most powerful ways to change your behavior. So write down things you are grateful for at the beginning or end of your day. Send a text or write a letter of gratefulness to someone you care about. Practice random acts of kindness. It's the nice thing to do, and it also boosts chemicals in your brain like serotonin, the policeman of the brain, and oxytocin that makes you feel more loved and loving. With random acts of kindness, you can start a chain reaction of kindness while decreasing your level of stress, decreasing anxiety, and preventing depression. Skeptical? I get that. We all know those people who do all the right things and have chronic illness or die at an early age. And we know those, th those people who live unhealthy lives that live long. But the research is loud and clear. Those people who make specific lifestyle choices live longer and better. By making intentional choices, you can live long and well. Age is a number. Old or young is an attitude and a lifestyle. If you want to have more energy, feel better, look better, and live long and well, then begin with one choice at a time. Focus on it every day. It will become a habit. Make it your goal to live each day to the fullest and die young as late in life as possible. Thank you. Woo!